Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to use some basic HTML and CSS in order to create an online glossary. So I was looking at this website earlier, and they happen to have a glossary of financial terms and things like that. I thought, I thought this is a good basic example of something we can use a dialog list for, definition list. And it can be used for a glossary, as they're doing here, but it would also be really good for an FAQ, or Frequently Asked Questions, section of your website. Okay, so let's get to work. On my editor, I've already got a blank page set up. In fact, there is my blank page right there. And I'm going to work in this article section that I've got. Let me zoom in on that font one more shade. Okay, now I'm going to start off here with a, uh, I'll create a little section called ID equals letter links. And these are simply going to be the alphabet that goes across that a person could click on to go to that particular section of the glossary href equals hashtag a. That'll be a letter A there. I won't do the whole alphabet here, but we'll get a few letters, B, C, and D. So each of these letters are hyperlinks, and they're going to jump down to that particular section of the glossary where those terms are. Okay, that's enough to get us an idea. Now, after this section, I'm going to create what I still call the definition list, which is like the original term for it back in the late 90s. Um, but now, I believe the, uh, the W3C is referring to this as a dialog list. All the HTML is basically the same. So we use a set of DL tags for the dialog list. And then there's going to be a number of DTs, or dialog terms. For instance, this will be a term starting with letter A, and then the term is followed up by a DD or a uh, dialog definition. So we've got the term and the definition of a glossary, DTs and DDs within the DL. And for this one, I will just type in lorem tab, and there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste these a few times, and I'm going to have three or four fake terms that start with the letter A, and three or four that start with the letter B, just by copying and pasting. There we go. Got a bunch of terms and definitions now. And you can see them actually starting to develop here on the page. And for the most part, we're, we're almost done. Uh, but let's do a little bit of styling so this looks a little bit better. It's a little bit easier to visualize. Now, the first thing I'm going to style are going to be my letter links. I want these big and bold so a person can clearly see them. So this is in my ID letter links. So I'll jump right up here. And I'm going to style the anchor tags that are within that section. Nice and big. Bright white. Bold, definitely. I want them to be really big and obvious. There we go. A couple other things we can do. Text decoration, none. And how about a margin right of 1M? Let's separate them apart from each other. There we go. That looks pretty good to me. In fact, I do want to put a little bit of margin. Let's do this on the overall section, that little block element right there. So now those letters are spaced right away. We could do a hover effect on those, but we'll save that for another day. Okay, so we've got those. Now I want to do a bit of styling with my terms and definitions here. So let's see. My DTs, margin top of 2M, margin bottom of 0.7Ms, color, light gray, weight bold. It's going to help those terms pop a bit so we can see those more easily. And similarly, take those definitions, light shade of yellow, margin left, um, 1M. Let's do a big margin right, 8M. Yeah, so that's the idea. Obviously, you can spend more time styling those so that they fit well with the look of your web page. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, when a person clicks a letter, I want it to jump to that particular section. So we already have our hyperlinks set up properly with a bookmark link method. 
I'll play around with letter C. So when you see something linking to hashtag C like this, basically we want to look for the ID attribute of a particular element. Now, older method used a name attribute, but we want to use the ID attribute. So I'm going to run down here to my first letter C term. And there it is. And I'm going to put right inside of that DT ID equals C. No hashtag there though. So IDC. Now what is that going to do for us? Well, once I refresh and I click on the letter C in my alphabet, my page is going to jump and display the first letter C word. I've got four letter C words. The previous one was a B, so that works. Now, of course, I didn't set one up for B or D, but it would be the exact same method. Click on the C and there we go. Now, what we have there is actually enough for a basic HTML glossary or frequently asked questions. I think what we'll do is in the next video, we'll pick up how we can create a back to top hyperlink so that wherever the user is within this glossary, they can click a button and automatically go back to the top and click on other letters in the glossary alphabet. Thanks for hanging out with me.